Welcome to my new channel. My last one wasn't high quality, decided to stop and start fresh. So I hope this one is a much better format than before. But my channel is all about episodes about clarinets, saxophones, finances, stocks and investments, also other errors, home defense, security, learning how to photograph ghosts as an example, which is always fun, <clears throat> and learning about infrared and cameras and ghosts and things, and about anything else we want to ramble about. Today's episode is about what kind of clarinet do I have? So this is more in relation to clarinetperfection.com, <clears throat> which is the one website I used to run. I still have it. But I used to run a uh, clarinet and saxophone repair shop, uh, which I kind of had to stop about over a decade ago looking at restarting it again. Uh, but I get emails all the time of what kind of clarinet do I have, how much is it worth, and all that stuff. And, of course, here comes a cat now. But what, what we have is an email submission, someone asking for help identifying their clarinet. What we'll do is we'll try to learn what critical things to look at, and that'll help us identify what it is and help us search out what those identifiers are. So with that, we will get going here in a minute here. What we go to is we're going to go to the pictures and that was sent to me. So we'll start out with the pictures that were sent to me. Um, so what we have here, as you can see, is one of the pictures of the clarinet. Uh, what we have here is nothing really great to look at, but look at the surface. This is actually what looks like a rubber clarinet to me. Another identifier we have here is look at the trill key guide. It's not flat sheet. It's not a large cylinder like you have with Buffet. It's a really small cylinder. The small cylinder is reminiscent of a few brands such as um, Malern, Schreiber, and other U.S. manufacturers. And there's more manufacturers too. But that helps it, us narrow it down already. It's rubber, so there's not very many makers of rubber clarinets. Next, we'll look at the next one. Um, nothing really special here uh, except for the trill key look at that how big and swooping it is this up here is a replacement or a soldered on liar or something to the ring i'm not sure if it's a replacement ring with a liar on it but they soldered that piece onto it <clears throat> kind of looks like they soldered it onto it really so the only real identifier here is this big swoopy blob of a trill key <laughs> out of place there. On the lower part of the joint, of course, no emblem, nothing really special about the key work or anything. Um, next to barrel, you can tell that's a rubber barrel. <clears throat> and what's interesting here is for an older clarinet, each trill key has its own posts. So this shows some advancement. Usually in earlier clarinets, you would have trill keys that are sharing posts. So you'd be, have basically three here for the most part. And here we have all four. That's really indicative of a few companies, like Malarin was one of them, um, and some U.S. companies too. Next, what we have is something really identifiable here. If we look at the key here, we'll see that it's a pin pin actuator here. It's not doesn't lift up via a step part of the um, key, but there's a pin there. Usually on higher end clarinets or higher end manufacturer, you'll see this. Um, and the odd part here is let's look at that that um, thumb rest there. I emailed a person about this and I didn't know they emailed me back until I was putting this together. But this is interesting. It has Two screws, but they're vertical, not horizontal. And on older clarinets, <clears throat> they're usually one on top of the other. As a matter of fact, I have an older clarinet here. I'm going to get it right now. Okay, we're back to me now. What I have here is a really old buffet with the keys taken off. <clears throat> this is one with the um, wraparound register key. But let's look at the thumb rest here. Notice it has one screw on top, one screw on the bottom. This is how most of them were at that time. So the, and also this had the pins on the lifters. 
So when we look at that clarinet, we'll go back to it right now. Let me put this down. Uh, this is that key work. So back here we go. <clears throat> See one on top, one in the bottom. Let's keep going to the next pictures. Now here's one from above. It shows this quite clearly, quite clearly there. Not very many clarinets have that thumb rest. I think B and H may have it also, but the U.S. manufacturer is the rubber. B and H did make rubber clarinets, of course. Um, but I haven't really kept track of rubber clarinets just, you know, because, you know, this key work looks really student-ish, student the way this big key swoops around. This is one piece here, so it doesn't look like a, you know, I don't think it's a B and H. But uh, that's what we have to work with. And the key indicator here is that thumb rest. Of course, it's rubber, too. Um, and, of course, the other key work, as I mentioned. You know, it had these keys also had independent posts. A lot of them shared a post back then in these. So it showed an advanced setup in a way, but a student clarinet rubber. You know, they made some shortcuts here and there. And this swooping key, <clears throat> that's key because I actually found that on eBay, one with a swoop key like that. And it happened to have, uh, another one happened to have the same thumb rest. So we're going to go to that right now. So the e email was from a student. I went over what the changes were. So what we have here is what I found out is an early vintage Harry Peddler soprano clarinet with the same thumb, thumb rest on sale for eBay. <laughs> Very interesting now. And I have another picture up here. This showed another peddler. If you look at this key, drill key, see a big swooping key there? No, there's another indicator right there. So it's probably a peddler clarinet rubber. They made hard rubber clarinets. They found them on eBay there. So for me, this would be a peddler clarinet. I don't really have, you know, it's basically what I see there. <laughs> so we basically um, find out it's a rubber peddler clarinet. I went over with her the separate posts of left hand picky keys on the lower joint, the small slide cylinder for the trill key guide. You know, these, these are indicators to look for. The pin left hand picky keys to right hand picky key connectors. You know, all the trill keys are on the posts. You know, but like I mentioned, the thumb rest has two inline screws behind it, which was odd. And the right hand sliver key was also very identifiable going over the keys rather than underneath in a big fat thing that swooped over. Um, also, the peddler clarinets also had serial numbers that started with E, and this clarinet also had a serial number that started with E. So another thing that made it fit perfectly with that. The email I got was from just this month, January 2021, just last week. And I emailed uh, this person back and basically said it's a peddler clarinet with a couple of the examples I gave. <clears throat> so that lets us learn a little bit about how to identify clarinets. So I hope it... Um, Help you a bit there. And I want to thank you for listening to my ramblings again. And any questions or comments, put them down below. You know, you got to love the knowledge. You got to love clarinets and love life. And we'll see you next time. Here's my little uh, reindeer. Can you name who that is playing that? And the song that is? Sax players, you know? Sax players. I have a summer Mark 6 Alto and Mark 7 Alto comparison coming up. So we'll see you later. Right, Reindeer? Yeah. One of my favorite songs.